Okay, uh, lots more coming up from Jonathan in about 25 minutes' time. Now, described as the most radical reform of family and children's law in Ireland in almost a century by the organisation One Family, it's hoped the recently published Children and Family Relationships Bill will clear the way for same-sex couples in civil partnerships to jointly adopt children in Ireland and will ultimately change the very foundation of family law in this country. To discuss this in more detail and answer any family law issues you might have, I'm joined by Josefa Madigan from Madigan Solicitors and Mediators. Josefa, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Um, Just start by telling us exactly about this bill. What are the government hoping to achieve with it? Uh, first of all, Shane, I think just to say that, I mean, this, this is a significant departure from the existing legislation and heretofore a lot of these um, proposals that are in this bill haven't been covered. Uh, so in a sense, we have the existing legislation, uh, the Guardianship of Infants Act, the Status of Children's Act and the Civil Partnership and Rights and Obligations of Cohabitants Act. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, it but is, yeah. th- there were some... Uh, some some of the propo- or the the legislation needs to be updated and overhauled. So um, it's it's a very exciting and I would think a very twenty first century um, pr- uh, bill. It's is it essentially as simple as saying you know the traditional family that we knew thirty forty fifty years ago. Uh, it's more complex than that. And this law, this bill is actually going to t- legally take account of that. Absolutely. Um, it reflects a, a, an ever changing society. And we have to remember that the traditional family unit of a husband, wife and children has changed over the last, you know, 20, 30, 40 years where we have cohabitants living together, having children. We have civil partners um, with children. And I think it's very important to say that the overall premise of this bill is in relation to the best interests of the child. It's all about the child. Mm. And in the event of a family breakdown, whether it's a relationship breakdown or a marriage breakdown or a civil partnership or cohabitant breakdown, that the rights and needs of these children are addressed. So it's 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 very, very important. And I think it's been widely welcomed as far as, I, as I'm aware. OK, by the way, any questions for uh, Josefa, just drop us a text uh, 53106. Let's just deal with, with some of the categories of uh, people who may, who will be affected uh, by this bill. Um, same sex couples, obviously, in, in uh, civil partnerships, a lot of people are going to focus on that. What's the legal situation now in terms of them adopting uh, children? Uh, my understanding is one can adopt a child, but but a couple can't. Is that is that the Correct. case? Correct. Uh, since 1952, uh, a man or woman uh, single um, and, and indeed gay can adopt a child. So this is an anomaly in the law that hasn't been addressed. So uh, so in these in this proposal, a civil partners will be in a position to be able to jointly adopt, whereas heretofore only married couples could do so. So um, in that sense, it's revolutionary. OK, um, so be- before now, only one, if you were part of a couple, you literally could not uh, adopt, or certainly not, I mean, obviously it, it happens. Not, because not jointly, correct. OK, yeah. all right. Uh, other categories of, of people, one of the things that always struck me as, as uh, bizarre is uh, couples in a in a stable, long term stable relationship who had children. There was issues uh, if if for example there was issues for the father if if something were to happen to the mother, um, uh, and in terms of custody and so on. Will the law clear up that situation? Absolutely. Um, I, I, again, I think this is a very exciting uh, part of this proposed legislation. We have to remember it is at the consultation stage only and, and, and I suppose that th- there, there could be amendments to it. But in terms of the role of a guardian as it stands under the law and under the Guardianship of Infants Act, unmarried fathers don't have an automatic right to guardianship. So, so even though you're there... Every day, every night, living in the home with, with, with the mother, the child, you are the father. There's not an automatic guardianship. Not, right? not at present. So this, this bill proposes to deal with that and to give an automatic guardianship to, to fathers where they've been living with the mother for at least 12 months prior to the birth of the child. Uh, and if there's a breakdown in the relationship, at least tw- 10 months the, the relationship will have to have broken down at least 10 months before the birth of the child. So it, it, sh- it should be very satisfactory. It is a presumptive scheme, I suppose, mm. for unmarried fathers. OK. Um, the issue of surrogacy, I saw some headlines in the in the Sunday papers uh, yesterday in relation to this um, tightening up because surrogacy is, is it fair to say, legally something of a grey area at the moment in Irish law? Yes, and, and as we know, there's a Supreme Court decision. Um, we, we won't say too much in relation to that, but it is starting today. There's mm. an appeal from the High Court um, so, so that it'll be interesting to see what developments arise from that decision. But heretofore, there's been no clarity in relation to um, surrogacy. So uh, this bill deals purely with the non-commercial altruistic type of surrogacy. So commercial surrogacies, there will be penalties if, if they are engaged. In. According to the Sunday newspapers yesterday, pretty stiff penalties if, yes, for, for getting involved uh, in commercial. Yes, imprisonment is a reality, probably. Um, if, if either the commissioning 
uh, couple or the surrogate mother engages in a monetary um, exchange of payment uh, to to bear the child. Um, it's very important that there has to be um, I suppose, a legal architecture around surrogacy arrangements. And it's important that the sur- surrogate mother uh, enters any surrogacy arrangement voluntarily mm. and that she obtains legal advice. OK, um, I see in that section, assisted reproduction is kind of given us as a separate section. What's what's the issue in relation to the law there? Well, as we know, um, IVF, for example, and other uh, means of assisted reproduction are very commonplace in Ireland now in terms of uh, not every but not every intending mother or father would have their own genetic material that they can use. So there has been no um, procedure in relation to that. So now there are proposed rules written out in this bill for assigning parenting. And uh, again, with with the surrogacy matter also, declarations of parentage can be sought from the court uh, as long as the consent of the surrogate has been obtained. So that, so that's uh, very, very important. It has been a lacuna and anonymity in the law that hasn't existed prior to this. OK, uh, text, a text there uh, from somebody saying, uh, split up with partner, how do I get joint legal custody? OK, they, they didn't actually specify whether they're married or not or whether it's a male or female. Um, I, I would imagine that now, because of the way the guardianship bill is going to be dealt with, uh, they could probably apply to court, but I would get legal advice on that. Oh, OK. Um, now, the issue of uh, adoption. Um, uh, the most common... I, I was Actually, it makes sense now that I read it, but I, I wasn't aware of this. The, most co- the majority of adoptions in this jurisdiction are by the biological mother and the father who is not the biological parent of, of the child. Um, what's the law now and how is the law going to change? Yeah, that, that, to that? Is, that, that is the present situation, but this bill addresses this anomaly. So uh, fathers will be facilitated um, by being able to become joint guardians where they're not the biological father, which, which, is, which is ultimately in the best interest of the child. And again, that, that test has been spelt out in this uh, leg, proposed legislation. And this will save mothers having to go through the adoption of their own child, which really heretofore has been um, unnecessary in my view. OK, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, interesting, the, the, you, you talked about how this legislation, the, it's the, the child is at the, at the centre of it. Um, a child over the age of 12 must be consulted in determining the best interest of that child in terms of guardian, guardianship, access and custody applications. In a practical way, how, how is that actually going to work? Mm. I mean, the voice of the child is of paramount consideration in any family law context and certainly the children's referendum, the bill proposes to reflect uh, the outcome of that, uh, presuming it's going to be upheld. And uh, in, at present circumstances through the circuit court and the district court, we can obtain Section 20 reports, Section 27 reports and indeed Section 47 reports, which I know sounds very technical mm. to listeners, but I suppose it, 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 it allows us extra the voice of the child in circumstances where the judge and the lawyers themselves, uh, you know, aren't, um, you know, aptly placed to determine the best interests of the child. So it helps facilitate the court do that. In this bill, it's provided that from the age of 12, that the voice of child, that the child must be um, adhered to and listened to. Which uh, it's obviously a complex issue, but you would think on balance probably makes sense, doesn't it? I do, yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, uh, again, another thing you do hear about a lot uh, is is the issue of enforcement and, you know, parents, uh, be it fathers or mothers, not paying maintenance or so on. Again, the the law looks to tighten up that issue. Um, Yeah, because as it stands at the moment, um, the only way of, I suppose, forcing or compelling a, a recalitrant, if you like, um, applicant or respondent in adhering to a court order is to serve an attachment and, and commit the order to prison. So, and a lot of judges are, are very reluctant to do that, uh, to do, to enforce that. So now in this bill, there will be in fines and penalties um, open to a judge instead of having to force them uh, into prison. So I do think that's very welcome also. So as of now, basically, the only thing you can do is is somebody who isn't paying their child maintenance is is send him or her uh, to prison. You can't actually issue a fine. You can't, um, you can't, I mean, under this law, will they be able to, for example, will they effectively get money from their bank account? Will they be able to do that? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, and in in terms of maintenance orders at the moment, there can be an order made that uh, maintenance payments are deducted from source where a father or mother, you know, has breached a court order and isn't paying maintenance. Um, But this is, uh, I think it, it just allows the judge uh, a more uh, varied approach to how to deal with 
with, as I said, yeah, Catholic I mean, people. You imagine a judge is going to be reluctant to put somebody in prison for exactly. not. I mean, it's obviously very undesirable not paying your maintenance, but uh, with the prison so full, you'd mm. imagine a judge wouldn't want to do that. Uh, just a couple of texts coming through here, uh, Josefa. Um, by the way, my guest in studio is uh, Josefa Madigan of Madigan Solicitors and Mediators. Uh, how does the bill treat stepfathers? where the mother passes uh, away. Well, we uh, we sort of have dealt with that, I think, have we? Sort of. And I suppose, again, th- th- I mean, this bill is 151 pages, of, you know, of, of very detailed proposals. And again, it's very exciting in that respect. And one of those areas is in relation to step parents, where step parents can now bring a guardianship application um, to court to to gain access to their to the children again going back to the rights of the children this will ensure that where there is family breakdown um, or conflict that the children will be in a position to be able to continue on that relationship mm. with their step parent and, and indeed grandparents are, are also and, dealt and with where the mother specifically bill. passed away I mean again you're the legal expert I'm not but it just strikes me the aim of this bill is to make uh, it make it easier for existing situations to be reinforced in the event of, of, of a, an unfortunate event happening. Absolutely. I and mean, obviously through the will you can appoint testamentary guardians in those circumstances. But um, it's important to say in relation to guardianship as well that it, 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 you won't get guardianship if there are already two guardians uh, present looking after a child. So mm. um, it's only in those circumstances that you can apply for guardianship. OK. Uh, another text has come in. Uh, my wife just dis- decided to stop me to stop letting me see my children reason unknown my solicitor advised we tried to settle between us but she won't engage I have seen them since I have sorry I haven't seen them since she told me not to call what options are open to me? Mm. Well, I mean, Shane, I would always be a very strong proponent of mediation, but those circumstances, he should get robust legal advice and, and bring his wife to court. I mean, the children are entitled to have a relationship with their father just as much as their mother. And unless there is some very obvious reason that I'm not aware of, um, I don't see how she can withhold her consent unreasonably. So really, you have to go down the legal route if, if, well, if, if the other not party isn't, ball, isn't uh, playing ball. Yeah. He, he doesn't really have an option. Now you mentioned mediation it is yes. specifically dealt with in the legislation. Yes. Um, in what way? How is it going to be different from what is the, the status quo? Yeah, well I mean he, he, the, the it would appear the Minister is, is strongly recommending the that mediation is, is uh, recommended by solicitors to um, applicants and respondents of family law matters. But obviously it's a voluntary process and you, you can't compel somebody to participate in it. Yeah. So uh, I suppose in a sense it's, it's plain to the best nature of people. Um, the other thing that I find interesting from it, just reading through uh, the bill, is um, parenting courses uh, uh, family counselling. So it's going to be open to the court to compel parties individually or jointly to attend a post-separation parenting program. Yeah, again, this is this is this is, um, in my view, revolutionary, and I think it, it again, it is it, it's a nod towards trying to, you know, perhaps to having the family court referendum in two thousand and fifteen, which has been proposed to happen then, to take a more holistic and humane approach to family law in general, and um, in a sense, it'll allow the judge to say to parents because as you can imagine in very uh, protracted litigation that the parents you know their their egos get caught up in the whole thing they forget that the children are cro- caught in the crossfire in relation to this so it's 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 to help parents to see that post separation you know they need to be adult about this and cooperate with each other I- again about the best interests of the child mm. um i mean going through the different parts of it all of them seem to me pre- pretty much a common sense approach to this yes the obvious question is why is it only happening in 2014. Why didn't it happen 20 years ago? Hmm. Well, you, we would wonder about that, Jane. Uh, I mean, I mean uh, at has least there it's been happening pressure now. Building, been building for a long time. In I, I to suppose there have. And I mean, there was legislation in place, in place, as I said, but it's dating back from 1964, 1987. The, the, the Civil Partnership and Cohabitants Act in 2010 didn't really deal in relation with children. So um, now a civil partner is going to be, could be liable to pay maintenance for a child. It also gives um, a non-biological parent uh, rights in relation to the children. So there has been some movement. But again, the society has changed so much in the last 20 or 30 or 40 mm. years also um, in relation to the particular family units that are that are there. Now, I know you're a legal expert, not a political expert, but yeah. uh, when do you think um, this bill will, will, be, will become law? It's a pretty complex piece of legislation. I imagine there's going to be a lot of amendments and so on as it goes through the House of the Oireachtas. Yeah. Well, I suppose, um, again, it'll depend on, on, you know, it's open now to consultation. So I suppose it'll depend what feedback um, the Minister gets in relation to it. OK, but we're probably looking at imagine. maybe early next year. I would imagine a matter of months, hopefully, you know. Hopefully. Um, and the 
politics of it again probably not a fair question to put to you uh, is there much in this that would be seen as contentious that uh, maybe for uh, I'm thinking maybe a sort of the more conservative TDs for example in Fine Gael anything there that, Yeah that I mean to... you know I, I mean there has been a lot of talk around the fact that this bill is is allowing uh, civil partners adopt jointly but you have to remember since 1952 a, a single gay man or woman could adopt mm. so really it, it's not really changing an awful lot it's just actually allowing a couple adopt together and, and, and ultimately that's going to be in the best interest of the child where, where a single gay man or woman can do so. It's regularising a situation it is that pretty much ex- exists anyway. Absolutely. I, I don't see anything majorly controversial about it. Obviously by opening the door wider in relation to guardianship I think the courts will have to exercise very you know judicial um, probity in relation yeah. to that and, and you know also if a guardian makes a significant decision that is um, perhaps not in the best interest of the child that can be reviewed so um, but I think I think overall it's a very positive development Okay the, the bill is the uh, Children and Family Relationships Bill it's an incredibly complex piece of legislation long overdue but seems uh, pretty sensible um, uh, Josefa Madigan of uh, Madigan Solicitors and Mediators thanks very much for coming in to Thank us uh, today